What's going on guys, the Inhuman Beatdown, and I'm back with another Real Thoughts. This is the series where I kind of give my extended thoughts on a game I've already completed, and today we're continuing the common Rider trend of going to Super Climax Heroes, which is, well, not is, but was technically, I guess, the first one I did before I did Forza, but it feels kind of natural just to review them in that order because that's how it normally progresses but i'm stupid and started at the end and went backwards and eh, whatever anyways super climax heroes brought a bunch of new additions to the game such as uh now being able to just move in a complete 360 space around the area as well as a kind of better-ish question mark uh story mode well not story mode adventure mode that had several different missions that allowed you to pick from multiple characters for multiple missions or be forced into climactic or uh, kind of, what's the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, kind of like referential moments, kind of like the what ifs, not what ifs, but like, uh, now I guess that would be a good way to put it. I, I'm really kind of blanking on words for that, but yeah. Overall, the uh, that mode was okay for the most part. I, I think Forza did it better with having missions for each character, even though some of them just got like the the like lame fight the mooks kind of missions. Which I'm sad those are gone. I actually liked those, but I wish it was like you know they had other missions aside from those because those were cool but really fucking easy if you knew what you were doing. Um, but yeah, overall it was good, and the addition of the new characters, uh, including several of the movie cast, some of the secondary writers, and of course the Showa writers, well, some of the Showa writers, basically just, uh, who was added? Ichigo, Nigo, V3, Amazon, Black, Black RX, Shadow Moon, I think that's it? Don't, yeah, because Stronger's not in the game, Super 1's not in the game. Yeah, I think Amazon came after V3, so... Yes, yeah, so it'd be those four, Black and Black RX, Shadow Moon, and technically Rider Man was in the game, but he's in assist for uh, V3, so, yeah. Yes, that all works. Okay, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just crunching the numbers in my head. I'm like, is that right? Uh, that sounds right. Yeah, the new interesting cast. Well, not interesting cast, but the new expanded cast, as well as... Uh, Several other characters that weren't in previous installments, such as uh, Eternal, Negadino. Those are the only two I can think of. <laughs> uh, and just overall improvements to the game in general, such as having a combat feel a little bit more fleshed out, a lot better. And the introduction of Rider Glide for some characters, which just added a cool new little attack. It was kind of cool. A lot of them were kind of had have, have like a cinematic feel to them. So it's like, oh man, if you do this thing, this thing happens. Such so as like you could see Trajadol actually like fly across across the screen doing his little fireball attack thing. With uh, like Joker with Cyclone, they do the Joker Cyclone kick, which is kind of cool. You know, we only ever see that with the Decade kick. Addition of the bonus character of the, or secret hidden character, I suppose, of. Hi, can't remember. Fusion States Forze, that's it. Is really awesome. Even though he just kind of comes off as Forze with several of Meteor's moves. It's kind of interesting, but I I think it kind of has the problem. Uh, it has a problem that uh, Purple Ice Tatoba didn't have. And that's, I don't know when I unlocked it. Because to be able to play as him, one must need already know that he exists. Because it's really particular how you how you unlock him. It's one of those things where I don't think you would just accidentally do this. I don't know. I could very well be wrong about that. But yeah, overall, Super Climax Heroes was definitely a huge improvement from Forza. Uh, streamlining a lot of the mechanics of the game and making it feel easier while also introducing some new characters, really. Unfortunately, that's really all I could say about the series. It was a good improvement and it had a lot more characters than the previous games before it. But that was also just the end. It, it was a fighting game, and again, as I've stated in the Forza thing, I don't really have the chops to talk about the mechanics of fighting games. As a Kamen Rider fan, though, who enjoyed playing it, it is definitely fun. Uh, if you like playing as your favorite rider, hearing your theme song go off as you get, like, 
the climax time, ready to deal out the finisher. Again, changing into different forms alters the finisher that you could do. It's like the difference between doing the Dimension Slash with O's to doing the uh, Puto Tiran finisher to doing uh, whatever Trajadol's finisher is. I don't actually remember. Or, uh, God, I'm trying to think of some other ones who had different finishers based upon their things. None are really coming to mind. Um, hmm. Well, I think the only letdown for it, though, is, um, uh, Wizard in a certain regard. And that's just because he suffers the same problem, uh, he suffers kind of the same problem that I guess Forze had as well that I didn't talk about. And that's that since he's the poster child, he, it's clear they aren't done with his story. So he has several powers and other things implemented. Like he has the dragon form for fire or for fire and I think wind. But fire doesn't really do much except for change a couple of his spells he can use and give him a new rider glide. Aside from that, his finisher, as far as I remember, was still the rider kick. Like his, uh, uh, kick strike. That's what it was. Choine, kick strike. Uh, and wind was cool on its own, but as far as I know, it didn't do anything. And was only accessible via tag team. So it would have no spells because that would be taken up by switching out with a partner. I don't know exactly what its abilities are. I assume it's very similar to the wind form of wizard as far as I know. I didn't play it much. I wasn't aware of it. I don't do tag team all that often. Um, but yeah. That's, uh, I don't really have a lot to say about it. It's like, I want to talk more about it, but it's like, the rest will just be me blabbering on about the characters going, Oh man, this thing's so cool. This finisher is cool. And all this stuff, and all this thing that the character can do, but it's like, that's that's more fanboying about the character, the uh, characters, and the uh, their powers as a whole, as opposed to talking about the game. But overall, I think if you are looking into getting into the uh, Climax Hero series, um, not the new ones, not like the Climax Fighters, differentiate the different or <laughs> know the difference. Climax Heroes, Climax Fighters. One is an arena brawler. One is a fighter. I know that's kind of oxymoronic since one of them literally has fighters in its name. Trust me on this, though. But yeah. Uh, if you're ever interested to play any of them, I don't think... Unless you're really desperate to see, like, the bonus characters that were in the previous ones. Like like I said, the uh, the Cyclone Axel Extreme, who was a great disappointment. Um, Purpleized Hatoba. Uh, those two. I think those are the only two, because I don't think... Yeah, the original Climax Heroes didn't have one. Double didn't have one, at least as far as I know. And yeah, O's would have been the first introduction having uh, Cyclone Axel Extreme. And then, of course, Forze had uh, Purpleized Tatoba. And then this one had the Fusion State uh, Meteor. Not Fusion. Fusion State Forze. God. Uh, but yeah, if you're ever interested to try try out these games, I highly recommend starting with Super Climax Heroes because it's like it's one of those game it's one of those cases of you know you could go back to the other ones and play those and it would be okay. In some cases, particularly I think only with the original Climax Heroes, that would be worth it because it has a fleshed out story mode that involves Decade. But aside from that, though, if you're just playing to have a little fun, do a little casual matches and stuff like that play Super Climax Heroes. It has more characters, more improvements, and really that's all you need to know. Also, where else are you going to be able to, like, fucking have Shadow Moon, fucking Satan Saber, I don't know, Eternal? I feel like, you know what, no, there's a thought I just thought about. It. It's like, you know something? For as popular as Double is, I, and they technically brought back Eternal for two movies. I was just, or not brought back, but they used him for two movies. I'm surprised that Eternal never became like the, the Shadow Moon of the Heisei era. Instead, they just kept reusing Shadow Moon. <laughs> Shadow Moon, Eternal, Fusion, Win. Can I get that happen? Anyways, I'm getting off track. So yeah, Super Climax Heroes is fun if you're a fan of Kamen Rider. Again, I can't speak to it as a fighting game, but that's really where I stand on this one. Much like with Forze, it's fun if you're into the subject matter. Definitely, though, you can skip going to Forze and just go to this one. This one is by far the superior version. 
And that's really all I've got to say. So, um, until next time, I guess I'll catch you all later. Asta.